Hello folks, this is the second video segment that I'm doing related to some miscellaneous stuff when you're using shell element, how to interpret the results. So uh, I will be doing two problems for you. These are very simple problems. So uh, there is, is a plate up there. One end of it is clamped and the edge on the left side is subjected to an axial load of 50 pounds. Don't worry about dimensions. This, I mentioned pound because I just want to some units here. That's all. Now, you know that this plate is going to be in tension, completely in tension. And uh, if you ignore those, uh, you know, stress uh, radiation concentration three dimensional effect at the clamp, it's going to be a uh, unilateral problem. So the stress distribution, if you look at the, uh, along the length AB, see on the right hand side, I'm showing the same thing along the length AB, the stress distribution uh, is going to be fairly uniform and uh, it's really the principal stress uh, and it's fairly uniform. Now, if you get closer and closer to B, of course that uniformity close to the clamp will, uh, will change, but away from the clamp, it looks like this. If you took the same problem and modeled it uh, with a bending, a force that causes bending, then uh, the, stress the, the stress distribution at any cross section that you take is going to be linear. Or if you go back to the formula for beams, for example, the good old MC over I tells you along the thickness, along the thickness of the beam, this is a shell, of course, you're going to be modeling in shell, but uh, the, along the thickness of a shell, the thickness of the beam is going to be linear as shown here. So the top, for example, in this situation, the top fiber, top of the top face of this plate is going to be in tension and the bottom, bottom one is going to be in compression. Okay. Now, we're going to solve this problem with the dimensions that you see here. Dimensions 4 inch, 1 inch thick. Uh, one inch width and 0.2 inch height, height of thickness. I'm going to assume it's aluminum. Uh, the, whatever I want to show you today has nothing to do with dimensions, but I'll just put these dimensions so that you can uh, uh, have some better idea of what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead here. And I'm going to, since I'm modeling this thing with shell elements, I need a surface, and there are different ways of, uh, of doing the surface. One way is to draw a line and just extrude it. The other way is to draw a rectangle and fill it. Uh, it's going to give you a surface. The third way is make a box, go and extract the top face of the box. That's going to give you a surface. Okay. So I'm going to go the first route, and this can be done in generative shape design or the, the stripped down version of this uh, module, which is uh, right here, wireframe and surface design. I'm going to do that in uh, generative shape design here. Okay, so on a convenient plane, on that vertical plane, I will sketch a line, which is one inch long. That's going to be the, the width of that uh, plate. So let me just make this thing one inch. Okay, exit. And then I'm going to extrude this in the direction uh, x as you can see by uh, four inches okay so there we are uh, for the for the reason that i made clear in the previous uh, in the previous previous video segment the which was labeled the direction of uh, uh, surfaces and things like that Although it's not necessary to do this step, step, but I would like to do that because I want to remind you what happens. So I click on the join. I'm going to join the surface. It's a single surface. There's nothing to join, but there is an effect that without join, you, joining, you won't be able to see. Okay. Now, uh, let's put some material on it. Metal. I said I'm going to make it aluminum on that part. And okay. By the way, why I joined this? Because if I double click on this join, it shows you an arrow. Basically, this arrow specifies the, the two sides of the, of, of, of the surface. 
One is traditionally called the positive sign, the other one negative sign, but it has nothing to do with positive or negative numbers. Uh, so uh, if you, if I, if I, if I uh, click on this this arrow here, notice it reverses it. So the, the positive direction will differ and operate back where it was. Now I want to remind you that the direction of this arrow tells you when you apply, a, for example, a pressure or a force on which side that force is going to uh, to to look for example let me let me let me uh, well, we're going to do that in a minute but uh, so uh, okay first thing i'm going to do i'm going to hide this sketch this sketch i'm going to hide it because i don't want later on when i put a constraint there or clamp that accidentally i clamp that sketch or the edge of that 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 sketch because then uh, then then Katia will not see it and then you'll get an error message become the unrestrained uh, basically structure so hide it okay so this is hidden now we're going to go to generative structure analysis static analysis we're going to mesh this thing with shell elements right there the actual uh, the actual size of this is totally irrelevant, but I'm going to get a little bit smaller. So maybe 0.3, and I'm using linear elements. Okay, good. I put the thickness on this shell. So here's a 2D property. I put the thickness on it. Pick up the proper uh, material, which was aluminum, and I put a thickness of 0 0.2. 0 0.2 thickness means that 0 0.1 up and 0.1 down. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to clamp this end, clamp this end. Now, here's the clamp, okay? When I select this edge, it will clamp. But these ends, you see these ends, see these ends? See these end clamp icons that you see? It could have gone up or it could have gone down. For us, as far as that is concerned, it makes absolutely no difference. But the question that I addressed in the previous video was, why Why some of the students will say that, wait a minute, I did the same thing that the guy next to me did, or the person next to me did, except that his or hers, these, these things went down and mine went up. This has to do with that joint. So let me go back to that joint. We have already discussed this thing in the previous video segment. Go back to that joint. If I double click on this, and if I click on that, okay, and go back to my generative structure analysis, remember before it was going up, right? Go on generative structure analysis, okay? And if I, for example, say, oh, show me the mesh, show me the mesh. What it will do, it will, uh, well, let's see, let's see how, what's going to happen here. Uh, okay. Now, when I run this, of course, there's nothing, there's no load here. I understand that. Okay. Uh, if I run this thing, it will, you notice that these, these will flip down. Okay. There really doesn't matter because all we did was say every point on that line on that edge is fixed for visual purposes whether this, this these little icons at the end go up or down depend on that direction of that arrow for us it makes absolutely no difference okay so as a matter of fact let me go back to join let me go back to join double click on it again Flip the direction of the arrow. Go back. Go back to uh, generative structure analysis. Run it again. Remember, there's no load here, so nothing fancy is going to happen. These will flip up. Okay? No big deal. The same thing is going to happen when I apply pressure here. The pressure may be pointing down, or it may be uh, on the top face. Or at the bottom face and uh, you know if, if you if you make it if you uh, if that's bothering you you can change the this the value 
of the pressure from positive to negative, it'll solve the problem correctly. But anyway, this is not our issue here. I want to put a 50 pound load on this. So uh, where is the force on that edge? So here's the distributed force on that edge in the direction X, 50 pounds, 50 pounds. Okay. Now, by the way, you might say, well, wait a minute, what happened here? So let me hide that surface. You see that? There's the 50 pounds. Excuse me. And it's not on those points. It's on that entire edge. But this is how Katia displays it. So let me undo it. All right, good. So there is a force, uh, 50 pounds, total 50 pounds on that edge. Let's run this. Nothing exciting is going to happen. Basically, this will stretch. Okay, so here we are. This is a deformation. We can see that it stretches. If you want, you can animate it to convince yourself that it's actually stretching. Good. Now, let me plot the von Mises stress. Here's the von Mises stress. And let me change the rendering here. All right. Okay, first of all, it may bother you that this is not uh, this is not uh, uh, straight because you put the force on that edge, therefore this should have been straight. The reason this is not happening is that because you're applying concentrated force. Concentrated force along a line. Concentrated force can be, for example, like a sharp needle pressing. That's a concentrated force on a surface. Or it could be the edge of a knife pressing. So it's because of that, there's no way in real life you can actually make concentrated forces, okay? Now, if you wanted to do a better job, instead of putting a force here, you would have put, put a force per unit length, it would have acted just like pressure. Let me actually go ahead and do that for you. Okay, so let me go here. Instead of concentrated force, I'm gonna go back to my load. Where is my load? Let me deactivate this plot first. None of these things that I'm saying is really the essence of this uh, of this particular tutorial. Uh, I have a different goal in uh, goal in mind that we're going to get there in a minute. But anyway, so uh, let me see now. So uh, let me delete my load, delete, and instead of load, put load. Uh, let's see now. Uh, force density. See that line force density. So if I select this edge. And put 50, uh, okay, 50 pounds per inch, for example, uh, 50, 50, uh, would be L, B, I think you need F underscore inch. The effect is putting 50 pounds, total of 50 pounds, because this is one inch, 50 pounds. Now, when I run it, when I run it, it's going to be nicer than nice and straight. That edge is going to be nice and straight. Straight. Okay, so if you look at the one Mises, for example, there we are. Okay? So this is not curved. Anyway, this has nothing to do with what you are talking about, but I will keep it like this. Uh, line force density. Okay, good. Now, if I double click on this particular contour and say more, okay, notice that here it says where the stress that you want to show is it on the upper surface is it on the lower surface are you looking at this thing from the top are you looking at this thing from the bottom or are you plotting the 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 the, the, the one with the stress uh, uh, along the the neutral plane neutral plane means the middle plane well let's see this was the upper let me change this thing to lower Nothing will change. Let me do it with, uh, uh, with uh, say more, do it with the middle. Nothing will change. And the reason is that when it comes to axial loading, the stress distribution is uniform along, uh, along the, uh, the thickness. It's not like bending situation, which varies. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is uh, let me plot instead instead of one Mises stress, let me plot the uh, principal stresses, the principal stresses. Uh, generally speaking, principal stresses are showing the 
in the icon form like that. Obviously, this is stretching. Uh, it's your, uh, you know, uh, it's your, uh, uh, why do I have 250 here, 50? Uh, let me see. Yeah, so it is uh, 50 pound, total 50 pound on that, that edge, divided, divided by the area of that cross-section, which was point, uh, 1 by point, uh, by point 2, that'll give you 250, okay? But anyway, the point is that, uh, here, of course, I can plot it like that. They're all, see, they're all tension. They're all tension, and the, in the in the lateral direction is compression because of the uh, uh, Poisson ratio effect. If I double click on this, and I go under more, and I say, okay, show me, show me, for example, just show me the, I don't know, the the biggest principal stress. So just show me the actual one, okay? Or show both of them. It doesn't matter. On the lower surface. This was upper, lower. It's going to be exactly the same. Nothing will change. If you do it for the middle, it's going to be exactly the same. Nothing changed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, first of all deactivate this and uh, go there. And this force that I apply, I will do it in the uh, in the Z direction, okay? So make it bend, basically. Let me let me do this. Uh, well, actually, can I copy this? Copy, put it there. I guess I'll type it. So let me delete this. I thought copying and pasting will work, and it should, actually. But from 50, LBF, underscore, inch okay so now it's going to be now it's going to be bending now notice that the directions were up but if i go to join and flip the direction these will point down but i don't want to do that that's not a big deal so uh, double click on this i just put a minus they'll take care of it okay good right there you can see it right there okay now let's run it. No big deal. First of all, deformation. It should bend down. Yeah. Let me reset my scale. There is the, the there is the uh, amp, um, amplification magnitude. Make it default. Okay. There we are. Okay. Uh, so it deforms like that. Fine. If you want to see the principal stresses, well, first of all, the von Mises stresses, so let's deactivate this. And von Mises stress, activate. Again, let me reset the scale. There we are. And change the rendering to material shading. There. Okay, now, it's a zero. That's because, let's find out, where did we actually plot this? This von Mises stress was plotted at the middle surface. I want it to be the top because the middle surface, neutral surface, all stresses are zero. Normal stresses are zero. And, uh, you know, so uh, there, there, there may be some shear stresses, but uh, uh, so uh, now I want to do the principal one. So this, this, this is the upper surface. By the way, if I do the lower one, if I do the lower one, let me see, just check. Let me show you something. These are all positive because von Mises stress is actually positive. So if you go to the lower one, you're going to get exactly the same thing. All positive, exactly the same thing. If you go to the middle, of course, you get zero. We know that. But what I want to do is actually principal stresses. So let me deactivate this. Principal stress. There we are. Okay. This must be the middle one. So let me double click on this. Principal stress, I don't know where I plotted it. It's going to be uh, the middle. On the top, remember the top fiber, were all under tension. Uh, it showed it to me here, but uh, let me, why is it not showing me everything? Just one second. Uh, upper. Okay, so 
So let me let me let me delete this. Okay, control stresses. There. Okay. So uh, look, this is the top fiber. I think it's the top fiber. Yeah, the top. Double click on it. Let me zoom in. Double click. More. Top fiber, upper fiber, tension. If you look at the bottom one, lower one, these become, see, these became compression. You can see that. Go to upper, it became tension. See this? Just look at this. Upper, this principle, uh, normal stress is uh, tension. Lower, Compression, you can see that, compression. And middle, of course, is going to be zero. Middle is going to be zero. So I didn't pl plot anything for you. Okay, basically, these are uh, zero, so I didn't plot it for you. The moral of the story is here's upper. Let me let me try this uh, one more time. Upper, it's all components, two components. Uh, upper. And you can do uh, uh, material shading. Let me see why is this is not done in material shading. Let me let me delete this. Uh, do it again. There, I want this. Oh, oh, yeah, I know what I'm, the problem is. Average ISO. That's what I wanted to do. Average ISO. Good. So this is the top upper. If you go and do the lower one, it's going to be. These are going to become negative. These are all going to become negative. Of course, because of symmetry, they're going to be, uh, uh, there we are. Uh, show me all the components, all of them. Uh, these are principal, right? Yeah. So, uh, of course, the C1, the C2, there is no C3. C3 is zero in shells. Okay, there we are. So, if you go, this is the, the actual one. They're all positive. You can see that. Oh, this is a... Uh, this is the, not the actual one. This is the uh, lateral one. So C2. Oh, oh this is the lower. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the actual one right there. Uh, lower, all negative. If you say upper, they're all positive. The moral of the story is this. When you are doing shell elements and you are uh, looking at uh, uh, the contour of stress, Make sure that you're looking at the right face because you may be actually plotting something that's on the other side of your eyesight, your view. One more thing I want to show you is uh, let me uh, let me go here under pressure. Under let me deactivate this. I'm going to deactivate that. You go under uh, pressure. See that here? Low. Uh, not pressure, uh, right there, line force density, right click. See, I went to the load, line force density, right click, uh, line load visualization on mesh. So here's what happened. It shows you that 50 pound that you apply, that was per inch, right? How is it applied? Okay. Beautiful. There is one more thing I want to show you here. This is very really useful. It's, uh, we, we have handled this problem, these two problems if you wanted to. This is done, but there's one more thing I want to show you is that let me go ahead and delete my load. First deactivate this plot. Let me delete the load. And deactivate the mesh. Now let me put a pressure there. Pressure on the face. Now I'm going to make this thing uh, positive so that it pushes into the object. Your friend may have done the same thing, except that these 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 uh, arrows may not be visible because they're on the other surface. It has to do with that normal of the join uh, icon. Now when I run this. When I run this, 
of course it's gonna go down we know that okay and let me deactivate this deactivate this go to your load right there go to the pressure right click show pressure visualization on mesh right there see what happened here so it, it tells you where this pressure for each element is applied it's actually applied at the centroid of these uh, these little uh, elements okay and we're going to discuss this in the next video segment uh there is one more thing i wanted to show you let me plot the uh, plot the one mesa stress one mesa stress for example or uh, yeah okay one mesa stress okay and uh, i'm gonna uh, get rid of this mesh get rid of this okay and uh uh, let's do this thing uh, as uh, 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 shading the material. There we are. But uh, what I'm going to do here is going to say, uh, right? Uh, double double click on that. Uh, double click on that one. Mister Stress. More. Notice that there is a little box here. There's a little box here which says display locally. So what is this? Okay, here's what happened. Shell elements. Go on surfaces so directions one and two local coordinate system one and two sit in the plane of the shell okay third one third direction is normal to the plane of the element and notice that when i apply a positive a positive pressure that means it's in direction three and positive by convention is pushing into the element okay so sometimes these will help you these will help you to uh uh, to debug some certain issues, particularly if, uh, if 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 meshes are imported from another program, and uh, you want to use those mesh, you have to make sure that uh, uh, this direction is what you want. This is important, for example, when you deal with uh, uh, contact. Okay, contact elements. All right, that takes care of this video. It took longer than I wanted, but uh, I think I showed you a few things that usually people don't pay attention to. Uh, or people who who are beginners in uh, Katia FEA. Okay, good luck.